All right, folks. Uh, quite an interesting story here. Star athlete Tony Humphreys uh, is transferring from Iona Preparatory School in New Rochelle, New York, after the assistant athletic director, Bernard Mahoney, made a racist remark to him. Now, Humphrey is a baseball player signed up to run track. Now, he's a major athlete already uh, deciding where he's going to go to uh, a major Division I a school. Now, Mahoney asked Humphrey why he wanted to run track. Well, Humphrey said he wanted to gain speed for baseball. What did Mahoney say to him? Oh, he gained his speed by running from the police. Humphrey was pissed off. So he came home, told his parents, and they're like, you're transferred to the public school. Humphrey said he's experienced racist incidents before and reported to school officials, but nothing was ever addressed. Humphrey announced his transfer on his Twitter account, quote, I'll be continuing my high school career at home. Pumped to return to Walter uh, Panis and will bring a championship back to Cortland. Mahoney has since resigned. Students staged a walkout as well in support of Humphrey. Hmm, you got your speed by running from the cops. How about that, Omakongo? Wow. <laughs> wow, man. First of all, the, uh, he should be fired. He shouldn't have an opportunity to resign. And I, I, I work in schools, public, private, and charter, all across this country. And this happens on a regular. I really respect this young brother for exercising his agency. We're seeing guys younger and younger exercising their agency and their choice to understand their value, to let them know I don't have to put up with this. Uh, there are a lot of other kids who don't have that same level of platform or, 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 no, or, or fame to be able to make a move like that, and they're kind of stuck in those situations. But I'm hoping that this will further call that out because it's happening more often than we know. And kudos to those students also. But look, man, this happens all of the time. And this is not, I'm sure this is not the first instance because the, the, the brother said that there have been many instances of this happening. And I really believe that these guys really got to get on point in terms of understanding that these kids are waking up. They've been inspired by people like Colin Kaepernick and, and just so many other people out there. And they have a platform as well. I'm sure that this brother has more followers than, than, than the guy who resigned. So they're going to be drawing more <laughs> attention to this, and these schools better get on point right now because there's going to be a lot of cameras showing up on these doors as these stories uh, start to come out even more. Uh, Julian. You know, first of all, i got to give kudos to my alma mater, Boston College, uh, for he has chosen to go there, and I'm excited about that. Uh, and I hope that BC acts right, and usually they do, but not always. These PWIs don't always know how to act around our people. But secondly, I think that uh, that Maloney, Mahoney, whatever his name was, should never be allowed to work with young people again in his whole entire lifetime. I mean, he's this is not the first time he's made these kind of comments. Clearly, he's done it before, and clearly he's gotten away with it. This young brother has actually said there have been comments before. He reported them. He took it to the top. They didn't do anything. So his parents probably said, look, enough is enough. Our child does not need to be denigrated by an idiot who doesn't have enough sense to applaud his commitment to his athletic career. So, you know, again, as Alma Congo says, our young people are saying over and over again, we ain't putting up with this. Before, folks put up with it. We swallowed it. We said, OK, well, it just was that one time. No, this is systemic. It is a systemic way of treating young black men and women, especially when they're athletes, but also when they're scholars, it has to stop. You know, this is, the thing of him, Maurice, is like the brothers just trying to play baseball, but you know, look, it is, you know, look, you got, you got these old white folks, and that's, that's, that's how they think. And so imagine uh, what, what they say about other athletes. Exactly. It's completely outrageous. And as Omakongo stated, it happens all the time to African Americans in different situations. As a criminal defense and civil rights lawyer, I talk to an individual who may be charged with their first offense every day. I hear the comments that are made from police officers and people in the community who, about a person who has a lack of criminal history. They may make a traffic stop, pull this person over, run your background, and say, Oh, wow, you're 25 years old and have no criminal record, or you're 40 years old, you have no felonies. Historically, African Americans were portrayed as criminals, and this faculty member was completely out of line perpetuating that stereotype.
Okay. Yeah, all black men, black people have some con contact with the law, have some type of criminal history. He was racist. He was completely out, out of line. His comment was uncalled for. And I'm glad he's no longer employed. All right, folks, back to that Mark unfiltered video in just one moment. <laughs> Alexa, play our favorite song again. Okay. I only have eyes for you. Folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. A real uh, revolutionary right now. Bow. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Rollins. <laughs> All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig?